Millennium buying two billion dollars of Bitcoin is like at like on like completely dead serious. That's so fucking bullish. It's so fucking <laughs> like, dude. like no no meme. That's just bullish. It's so bullish. It's so bullish. Like you got everybody buying Bitcoin. And, dude, imagine letting the state of Wisconsin just like out trade you right now. Like that's crazy, bro. <laughs> like I didn't even know Wisconsin was a thing, bro. Like until like I I actually had to pull people. Like yo, is anyone actually from Wisconsin? I've never met a Wisconsiner, Wisconsinite. Was <laughs> you know. <laughs> You guys from Wisconsin? Do you guys ever heard someone from Wisconsin? No. We no. from no. Boston. It doesn't. It doesn't exist. Bro. Yeah, they like. It's like the Green Bay Packers. That's like the only thing. Wisconsin. Oh, the Packers are from Wisconsin. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, see. I feel like I'm I feel like it's very close to Ohio in terms of like meme states. Like yeah. Ohio is definitely wearing the crown, but right beneath that we've got Wisconsin. I feel mm. like Iowa is another one of those. Mm. I know this we just is... hired an engineer out of the Midwest, so hopefully I'm not. I shouldn't let him just, say it was constant. Just <laughs> bashing his home state. Dude, but... that's what's going on, TG. People are letting. Yeah, I, I I completely, Farouk, you farmed the the picture. I just farmed your saying straight for Twitter, dude, for my followers. I love that. I I love that. Take it, dude. I need to do it for the. There's this one guy who owns a bar in Stockholm who sent me like 90 DMs over the last day. Are you serious? For Fantasy Top? Yeah. That's yeah. why. I'm like, bro, like, it's not that serious. I promise you it's not that serious. Dude, his life depends on it. What if he has to close his bar because you're not tweeting, dude? Imagine the impact you're going to have on the economy of that place. I was going to say, his life might not depend on it, but his bar may very well. Study that. Study bars. Study bars. <laughs> hey, dude, like, honestly, Sobeys is never going to come. <laughs> That's okay. We can call this the Gamonad waiting for a Sobe show. Yeah, <laughs> the, the Sobe waiting room. <laughs> so, Sobe waiting room. Honestly, I definitely wanted to get some takes on social fi. Um, it's blown up way harder than I ever thought it would Crazy. i mean like back thinking back like eight nine months ago friend tech was just coming out it was like oh this is cool you know probably going to be an airdrop but never thought it would kind of sustain through multiple months and then you know now we've got fantasy top all over the timeline we're talking about your guys dms and replies just <laughs> full of people save me for oak save me fred guy save me intern where is this going TG's the one hosting like town halls about social fight all day long. Yeah, bro. It's, it's literally like TG, I'll get, we need your take in a second, but I feel like, I feel like it is that Black Mirror episode we said before the recording started where we're all just on our bikes pedaling, like trying to tweet as much as we can, but like TG kind of ascended that and like has some deal where like we're actually just pedaling and he's the one, he gets like 30% on each, on each revolution. <laughs> Pedaling like power my lights. I, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I, we were talking about this earlier too. Like, honestly, the biggest social fight app is Pumped Out Fun. Yeah. I just did more revenue than Solana. Like, I, I hadn't been super deep in the Pumped Out Fun trenches in the last like three days I immersed myself. And it's pretty unreal, but I'm, I don't know. I'm a giga social fight bull. And I think the coolest, I think the coolest part about it is it gives us something engaging to do when there's just twitter like when the markets aren't marketing and there's really nothing happening price action wise all we have is just confined to twitter and like i made this tweet the other day and i said fantasy top is a twitter l2 like it builds this speculation tokenization monetization layer like on top of the only thing that there is to do when you're not trading meme coins so I think it's funny, like, if you look at Frentech, I was looking at this the other day, Frentech launched, I want to say, like, August 1st, or the first week of August in 2023, and Bitcoin was, like, 18, 20K. Like, it was, there was nothing happening at all. Like, the markets were, were beyond dead, beyond bearish. Nobody was here. Frentech gave this, like, engaging thing for people to participate in. And then Fantasy Top, obviously a different time in the market, but a couple weeks ago where the whole timeline is bear posting, the shitcoin short-term mania is like over. There's like nothing engaging happening, and then Fantasy Top just like drops this 
engaging ecosystem where you can go pretty deep. And I feel right. like it's inspired like the heroes to post. Like we were talking Is about this before. Like, intern, I was like hundreds of DMs and messages like, yo, tweet more, tweet more, tweet more. And it's it's jokes and it's a meme, but like this fantasy shit is serious at the same time. So it's like we're memeing huh? about it, but I would imagine you, jokes or not, you feel at least a little bit more pressure to be active, to be on the timeline. And it's like encourage, it's basically encouraging discourse on Twitter. So I, I think the social fight thing is fascinating. And I think fantasy top building on top of Twitter instead of being friend tech and like gating a different ecosystem or being stars arena and competing with the Twitter feed is quite literally goaded. Yeah, dude, that's like the, the hardest thing for me with Warpcast, right? Which like, I love going on Farcaster, dude, awesome app. I'm just, it's not like a habit. Like Twitter is a habit, right? I check it often, like constantly throughout the day. Whereas I find myself, I need to like force myself to go into a different app. So yeah, Fantasy Top, like building straight on top of Twitter. So you're just doing the same stuff. Uh, awesome idea. The other side of it too is like, uh, I wasn't in the first wave of heroes, so maybe Dragon Fruk, you guys can can run through this, but they basically there was this thing where it's like, oh, uh, accounts that were big in 2021 have very large follower accounts, but there's less like new active people. Like you look at someone like Block Raze, he's got like 45k followers, but he gets like and some level engagements. It's crazy, and so they nerfed it right, and they changed it the next week. So. People still have some, you know, issues with what the incentives look like right now. You basically just have to tweet constantly throughout the day if you want to do well. Um, but, like, they'll just tweak it until they get the incentives right. And, like, I'm, I mean, like I said, Thrag, I was talking to you the other day. I hung out with Travis last weekend. Super smart guy. Yeah. Um, like, he's going to get the formula right. It just takes, like, you got to try a shot on net see what happens what worked what didn't and then just change the incentives over time but the idea itself is so strong i mean I it's just the, the financialization the of social platforms yeah go ahead no go ahead sorry i'm, I'm delayed go ahead, go ahead i think it's a live right is your live yeah everything everything records locally so oh, it won't like it okay. won't freeze in the, okay, the okay, like yeah. post-production but like for the the sake of recording it you know can sometimes <laughs> go in and out okay okay my bad my bad go ahead tg no, go ahead, go ahead. Make your point, make your point, make your point. Um, fuck, now I lost it. I, uh, but something along the lines of, like, you know, like, everyone, everyone, I think, everyone, at, there was a point in time where, like, that I was writing about this not long ago. I was talking about, like, now, like, creators and users have access to finance, financialization of social media, whereas before we didn't, right? Like, it was always, like, Instagram, Meta, making all the money from creators like myself and others on the platform or the consumers. Like, on X, until most recently, it was the same thing, which actually kind of still is. Like, you don't really make much money uh, using the platform, unless you, like, and some level tweeting, right? They just talked about it. But now, like, we're building tools on top of it where, like, everyone from Threadguy and I, like, we're creating content at, like, an absurd volume and we put an absurd amount of time and effort behind it. We can get something out of it. That's And sometimes it's life-changing for, for people. Like, the first payout, Fantasy Top, was pretty wild. Like, we each made, what, three, four ETH? Uh, which is a lot when you think well, about it for us. being a hero. If it ever comes. If we ever, we, ever, <laughs> you know, that's true for now. But friend tech, like, you know, like there was this aspect where like, yeah, creators got more out of it right off the bat than the user. But the users still could. Like, you could be like someone like cooking, like being early and like buying friend tech uh, people and trading them up, right? There's a lot of people that started Fantasy Top with like under 0.1 ETH, right? And that's Travis's goal. So I think that's what it adds. It adds this level of like, like just like equality almost, right? Where like people can actually get something from using platforms and interacting with their favorite creators, right? Like you can get something from an earlier thread guy by buying his card or like buying his key early on without needing to be thread guy, right? So it just evens out the playing field a little bit between the platform and the users. That's where social fight's fun. That's why I like the conversation about Pumped Up Fun and Solana, because like, what's social fun Solana? I remember Mert was like, yo, why is no one built social fun Solana? Because Solana is like the chain that makes the most sense. Facts. Uh, and Base Carbon was like, and another two is like, well, there is social fun salon. It's called Pumped Up Fun, which I love the debate today that TG was having because it is like meme coins in a way 
could be social fi because like you need that social media component to it and anyone can make money like we love when a celebrity or someone bigger and bigger and bigger talks about the meme coin that creates a network effect and you have like all these like reply guys and girls like in, in big creators uh, dms and comments like this is all like a big social fi nfts like NFTs were first iteration of that. Like last cycle was pretty wild. Like from a social component. Like NFTs, why do you buy an NFT for the most time? To create a club. Like BAYC was that, <laughs> and he kept getting rewarded for being that club. So it's like, and that crew, like D Gods right now, is a club. Like you know what I mean? So that's like, you you sold NFTs in order for people to be able to join clubs um, on social media. Some people built on top of that, some didn't, but early adopters were rewarded, right? So it's just like I think we're overthinking it. I think this is all it is. I, you know what I think? Like, and this this might get too high level, but like, in the abstract, right? There's just a lot of social connection that wants to happen on the internet, and like over the last, you know, since Facebook was invented, um, so call it two decades. Like, it's just continuously iterated to get people closer to like what they want their end state to be. And like crypto and social, the overlap is obviously some financial component, right? Like NFTs were that. They were the first thing that allowed people to create clubs, express like what they're interested in or who their friends are, um, what they're excited about. And like it was a very, you know, like in an ideal world, it's not the most direct way to do it. Like it was very just kind of, hey, here's a picture and you can buy and sell it. Right. And people would buy and sell them. That's great. It creates a market. But like over time, it's going to get more nuanced. There's going to be like new levels introduced to that spectrum of like, you know, either what account you're betting on or um, what like trend you think will pick up. Like it's basically just a new way to express opinions while also connecting with people. Like I don't think anyone thinks the Internet's going to get less pervasive. Right. If you guys saw that chat GBT4 thing, like, bro, yeah, it's, it's basically wild. like wild, dude, like that look like. I don't know. I think I feel like the like the current state of social fi is almost like these mini game experiences that are the prequel to the full experience. I like very much so on a high level have been quite bullish on on social fi for a long time. Um, well, relatively speaking, long time, like a couple years. Uh, but I think like when you look again, like Kevin was saying at the iterations of internet applications that actually do a great job of capturing attention, like you need to introduce a new mechanic that nobody's ever done before in like a certain packaging. So like Instagram comes out and it's a way to share your photos, but nobody had ever like kind of cracked the, the photo sharing game and like, the way that got the social flywheel spinning and the way that Instagram did. So I like almost feel like these social fly experiences are almost like these mini games that are very engaging, but it's ultimately a prequel to what we're going to see with a real like genuine social super app coming on the scene and changing up the entire dynamics of how social media works, what the relationship for creator and consumer is and I mean, I'm just like so excited and hopeful that we get to the stage where, you know, like there is like an actual platform that everyone's joining, not just crypto natives. Um, and there's like some of these dynamics that we're seeing from these these early applications. Well, the thing that's tough about the Socialify too, and Kev, I don't know if you have any thoughts on this, but it's like, I feel like the narrative where we agree, like Socialify is gonna be a leader here, but there's, there's like nothing to buy. Like, what do you buy if you want to come in with size on social fire? Like, am I going to just buy like intern legendary cards on fantasy top? Like maybe, but like what? There's no, like there's not like whiff play or like a Pepe where you can go in with like size and feel like you're, you have an index of the whole sector. Like, I think that's because it does feel like it's little mini games and these like walled off experiences. There's like DJ on forecaster and there's front tech and there's stars arena over here. Like these gated experiences but it's hard to confidently come in to something with liquidity and size and make like a comfortable, confident, long-term bet. Yeah, so um, I think that that's, it hits on a little bit of what I was just talking about, where like it will get more accurate, like you'll be able to express your views more accurately over time. Like you need the cards because that's how the tournament works right now. Like that's kind of the gameplay. Yeah. But you could see a world where it's like, 
no, you don't need to own a car. Like you don't have to buy an entire NFT, right? You can express like, oh, I like $50 worth of this bet, right? It's, it's almost like when you're first coming in, you're like, damn, Bitcoin's expensive. Like I can't afford a Bitcoin. It's like, yo, you can buy half a Bitcoin. Like you can buy however much you want of a Bitcoin. Um, so I think you do, like it gets more granular um, because it is a bit clunky right now, right? Like I think, uh, got for example or actually i think i don't actually think that's how you pronounce it but um he was telling me like yeah he there's only like 32 of his cards like that was just however many were minted so i couldn't bet on him because i would literally have to like sell my car to go and buy his (laughs) fantasy top card like i would have loved to just been able to be like all right i'm gonna put 200 bucks on him because he gets like two elon replies a day do you even have a a car too the supply like on fantasy <laughs> top specifically you like get um the best heroes get punished for like being good at the game because the better you are the rarer your card the less volume it there is the less um fees you rack up like that that has to get solved as well like it, that, the balance is definitely not there on fantasy specifically yeah don't close that gap i think what's good with good founders and social you can't you have to adapt anyways like what's social file like, it's just social media like <laughs> Social media changes every day because the algorithm changes every day. We still haven't figured it out. Um, people don't want to leave platforms, but also those platforms are not getting better, which is where we're like having issues. Like X is not getting any better. X, X is like there's nothing that's gone better on X in the last like in the last month. Like there's not one single thing they fix. Not even the DM function. <laughs> but we're still like using it, and we need to, right? Uh, there's no other choice. Uh, but it's, it, it's like Farcaster, Warcast is fire. But like, as much as I love it, like I'm a huge fan, massive bull. DWR, big fan. DWR, so, big fan. Love Dan Romero, what they're doing. But fuck, like, do I have trouble like getting on Farcaster and using the platform? And even an insane amount of DGen that totally missed could not even get me on there as much as I wish. Like, I want to, right? But it's like at some point you get so busy, right? So it's. Um, it's pretty wild. Like even like TG was screaming about DJ in space every day, but I bet you like eighty percent of the space is still not getting on. Um, yeah, so even, bro, even I haven't been on in like ten days. Like it's right. That says a lot. This is why Fantasy Top and honestly Pumped Out Fun game changer because it's yeah. Like we've accepted Twitter as like the town hall social yeah. network. We layer on top of it because the problem with Farcaster is it's like to be in the trenches of Twitter. It's a full time job. Farcaster has equally engaging and time consuming equivalent over there. A second full time job. Like, I'm not working. It's, you can't be all in on both. So, it like, really segments your time. But I think that's the reason why I've been bull posting Fantasy Top so much is not so much that ecosystem specifically, but like the concept and the primitive that it brings to discussion. Yeah. Just meet the people where they are. Like, we, I don't want to be met somewhere else. Like, you know, like, remember all these platforms that came in and went? Like, People want that. Like everything we're doing, like on our end, like we're building on top of platforms that already exist. Like you could go on YouTube. Like I just saw the demo for our tech. Like, like you could literally be on YouTube and like your Chrome browser, the like Chrome extension will like log in, log that you're consuming my content on YouTube and get points for it. Like it's that simple. Like people want to be on the platforms. They want to listen to this and then earn something, whether it's from a, you know, like uh, whether it's anything. Like you can. That's the, what the people want. They don't want to leave the platform itself. So. You either build for that or we're probably not going to be around that long unless you're like insanely funded because like even social like i've been doing media my whole life but like i thought about like what if one day i create a platform and like i never was attracted to that as a founder because like i'll need like a billion dollars to do that <laughs> you know what i mean straight up like and you guys know like you're building shit like you know like what you can build with 10 20 million dollars in media versus what you ha- you could build with like what you have to like build and need like hundreds of millions of dollars to compete with suck like that's okay. Like, I'll just keep building on top of what these people are doing. I think that's the easiest way to go about it. Yeah, it, it actually opens up, um, you know, we were talking about pumped off fun and, and meme coins. Um, in general, the sentiment on Twitter is that VCs are net bad for the space and meme coins are this, like, egalitarian technology. Yeah. Um, that guy just hopped back on. We're going we're gonna to hit on something on the venture side quick. So, yeah, they're like, oh, uh, venture investment is evil. Um, This is something that basically screws over everyone in crypto. Like, this is the worst thing of all time. They're, 
like I, I'm telling you firsthand, like from the chains that you love, right? Solana, um, the ones that are live right now, maybe not counting. I'm not going to touch Ethereum's venture background, um, but like Monad, for example, right? We we need to hire a lot of people to solve really hard engineering problems to get this thing up and running so that people can check it out and use it. And like, you know, maybe Monad's very high performance, low fee EVM allows for new type of social applications that were previously impossible to exist. But like someone has to build that, right? And there's not just like 10,000 super smart devs with like crazy opportunity costs that are just going to hey, this is interesting out of, the, out of the good of my heart. Let's go and push this forward, right? So I think that's like one massive, like the like venture funding in the space does way, way more positive for all the apps that we want to use than I think people care to admit just because dunk on VCs is like, you know, trendy. Um, I mean, it's always going to be cool to dunk on VCs, but... Uh, <laughs> for sure, but like, for sure. I think there's also like the good and the bad ones, right? Like just like people, it's good and bad people. Like, right, like we get approached by VCs, funds. We talk to the biggest ones all the time. Uh, across the world, like was just in Hong Kong last week, talking to a bunch of them. But like, the thing is, is it's in the past. Like a lot of the projects were just like straight up just VC heavy, and then you know we retail get dumped on, right? Like, and, and it's always like that, right? There's also like there's also uh, the whole market making business, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like there is a past from some of all these like sophisticated actors that like destroyed even other funds. Like I spoke to a massive fund owner that was telling me about this other fund dropped on him. So even at that level, the VCs, like that happens to them too. So uh, you're right, like it's not like a good or bad thing. You need funding to build, um, but now there's more egalitarian ways of like making that accessible, right? Like look, like meme coins are fun. I love meme coins. I'm deep in the trenches, TG knows. But like, like as much as I love like the Epic coin that like Mando launch, right? Using pumped up fund, which is like the fourth or third largest by market cap ever come out of pumped up fund. Like after like what Shark Cat and like Michi. And I was chilling. I'm just giving the list. That's the list, right? Because that was a combo. Um, you still need like, you know, also projects that are not meant to be just meme coin projects. <laughs> and like that want to go a little further uh, than, than just the no utility, like community aspect of it, right? Like you need money to build. And that's, that's, a, that's just a fact. Hey, on the, uh, on the meme coin point, Kevin, I want to get your take on this. We are talking about it in Spaces the other day. Suzu made this tweet the other day, and it went, I mean, has like 500,000 views. And he basically said that, like, VCs in the span of a couple months went from, like, laughing at meme coins and insulting them to realizing, like, the high FTV, low float meta is over, and, like, there's no one to buy these unlocks. Like, how do you think sentiment around meme coins has evolved in the venture vertical over the last couple months yeah so i think i mean one one thing that's definitely worth pointing out um you can think about fully diluted meme coins as if the insiders already have their bags the only difference is they're already unlocked right they did it's just liquid they can dump at any point so uh something that's worth considering right at a certain point someone is going to be in super early I'm um, taking it. Dude, I think we just got Sobe. No way. No, no way. I, I see him coming in. Oh, uh, that's me. Yo, yo, pre- pre- pretend you don't see him. Pretend you don't see him. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I think for... Fe- <laughs> I think for uh, VCs on the meme coin side. So, one thing that you got to understand about, like, people that are operating in the venture space is their incentives are different, meaning that, like, they need to raise funds to deploy. Um, crypto having a very good reputation makes it very easy to talk to Larry Fink and tell him this is the future of finance and this is worth investing in. And like, like people that move like $500 million around aren't like, yo, like Pepe's hilarious. Like this is the future, right? They, they have like very strict mandates, like they're sophisticated actors. That's why they're in the position that they are, that they're like allocating a lot of capital. So I don't think it's that VCs hate meme coins and like, maybe they do, bro. Like Ledger hates meme coins and that's fine. Like that's just his take. He's not a VC. Um, But like they, the people that they answer to, it makes their job harder when the only thing people are talking about is Harry Potter, Obama, Sonic, Inu, Tan. And that's like what crypto is known for. So it's, it's not usually it's not their own take they're looking at this like damn this is going to make my job way harder 
like t- take it on yourself, right? Whoever you answer to and like what you're accountable for. If this thing just started organically happening that your boss is like, what the hell is this? It just makes your life more difficult. So it's, I think it's really just like needing to talk to LPs and tell them what meme coins are and why they're pumping and that like this is a different area of crypto but there's like legitimate you know emerging technologies that will change the future over here and like just don't think about the meme coins when like their kid is probably telling them about meme coins that they're buying um i think that's like truly the core reason it's it's honestly kind of like if you could like buy lottery tickets on like the NASDAQ or like, you know, open up your Robinhood app and like you could buy Apple stock or you could buy like a lottery ticket, like right next to it. And just like being in the same place, I think just inherently causes that confusion. But if you just like kind of step back and think about what it actually is, then like, I mean, to me, it makes quite a lot of sense. Like if we have this just open permissionless decentralized opportunity here then like people can do with it whatever they want yeah I, like one here here's a different framing to look at it from right the open ai created chat gbt and everyone's like yeah this is like the future right there's all these new updates coming out this is crazy important we should pay attention to this um there's a lot of stuff chat gbt does not let you ask it right like famously people be like this is censored like you can ask it to create images and let your imagination run wild. And there's images that it won't create. Or like you can ask it a question that would like, if it answered in any form, it would make them look terrible. So they just like, don't allow it. Um, If they did allow it, like you can imagine the internet would be run through with like ridiculous, disgusting, heinous, violent content, like every single bad thing possible. And that's, what's going to go viral. So, like, everyone wouldn't be talking about, yo, ChatGBT is awesome when I need this answer. They're talking about, like, dude, this is, like, some ridiculous, violent weapon that's ruining the internet for everyone. So, like, in crypto, there's there's no one that can prevent you from making meme coins. But, like, so it certainly makes the job harder for the people that are trying to push the good aspect. Um, I don't know. Just a, a different reframing for it. I am pro meme coins for what it's worth. I'm just like trying to strongman the argument for the people that are like, this makes my life harder. What's up, Is Provost? Sobe here for real? I'm here. I can't Sobe, see. Sobe, are, are you asleep? No, I can't figure out how to turn my webcam on. <laughs> <laughs> I just got off of a really long phone call, though. My bad. It went way over. Was it a big one? It, well. it was a big one. We just got a nice big game coming to Zai, baby. Ooh. Let's go. Okay, nice. that's, that's, that's understandable. Then it's worth yes. being late. Yeah. So, Sobe, we were we were talking social fi. We were talking meme coins. Um, if the, you have any hot the meme coin shit, there's a lot of builder cope around meme coins. Agreed. That I think is kind of funny, but I don't think it's because meme coins are pumping. I think the problem, like the second order effect of meme coins, is people go, here is like an asset class of meme coins, which is like financial nihilism. Like, oh yeah, it's like all a scam, it's a joke, but it pumps and people make money. They take like the attribution of that industry, like that asset and then like apply it to everything else. So I think that's the, the frustrating thing I've heard from teams. That actually I will I will say is not cope. It's like, oh, you're building something super meaningful and you're working really hard on it, and then everyone just goes, Yeah, the whole fucking industry is a scam because I'm buying Ansem's dog on on uh, radium after like 90 tries so it's, it's it's interesting but i think a lot of the problem is really retail gets cooked a lot yeah in tokens um you have like the low the low float high fdv kind of scams are just very rampant and there's <clears throat> you know i i've noticed this for like for zai we're one of the few teams that like literally have our unlock schedule like out there we're like here here's the freaking unlock schedule like we're not trying to hide this shit from you Teams will make it kind of hard to find that, and I think one thing that financial, like regulated financial markets, do is, you know, you every like quarter or whatever, you have to submit something. Like if you sold a bunch of your like stock, if you're like one of the the founders, you have a bunch like S S nine or whatever the fuck it is, S something, dude, some bullshit. We need some stuff like that for crypto, you know, like a lot of uh, the low float FDV shit is kind of weird because teams can honestly like ot if they do a good job of like creating institutional fomo 
teams can just OTC their tokens without even being subject to their yeah. best. So the incentive alignment is like all super fucked up, to be honest with you. I feel kind like a heavy Sobe, topic for this podcast. I, I was going to say, dude, I, I feel like <laughs> Sobe just came in without the 30 minutes of context before, camera off, and just dropped like Aristotle's it. take on <laughs> Typical financial Sobe. nihilism. That was beautiful. Uh, financial so, nihilism. So what about, I mean, we're, we're hitting on a lot of the the kind of hot topics here. What about gaming, Sobe? I feel like if anyone knows that side of the industry very well, it's it's you. Is there anything like cool coming down the pipeline that you think the same way fantasy top has kind of taken over the, the twitter timeline recently that that might spark that for gaming and and really get people enjoying yeah i think uh the gaming stuff the fantasy top i actually view as a game project more than a social fi project and the reason why i think it's doing well is because it caters to the audience that's here today like the crypto audience i think the problem that a lot of games do is they they try to do like they try to preserve like two different personas they're like yeah we're gonna go hard at like the web 3 dgens and the web 2 dgens or some of them just go screw like the crypto guys we're just gonna go web 2 i think that's the approach a lot of teams made over like 21 22 23 etc now i think we're seeing more teams going there's enough people here especially probably post fantasy top of like i don't need to be a massively successful game i could have a hundred thousand users but the ten thousand whales i have are monetizing so high like i think if you actually consider the fact of guys like sisyphus and all these stuff like playing fantasy top from a lifetime value perspective that game probably has like the highest like i like like average like net worth i've thought about this a lot too when uh people have talked about oh you know um, crypto twitter's kols get such large deals versus you know like a tiktoker i could go get a tiktoker like a little thread guy rip off, you know, and pay him like five grand and they'll do whatever. And they have like 20, 30 million <laughs> followers. But like that, like Kobe follows me on Twitter. Kobe's probably richer than that. All of that guy's follower base, like combined, like individually, right? There's all these random people that are just on Twitter, rich as fuck, <laughs> like, and they spend money. And so I think fantasy top is doing a good job of that to go back to the more concise point where you're saying, I think, I want to see more games that launch and go like we're just gonna, we're a web3 game like it's a crypto game you know it's not trying to be this mass market thing that your grandma will play while she's waiting at the airport like no this is straight up like a money game for dgens like fully on chain there are some cool games building in that like there's the curio guys are building duper which i think is pretty nice um we're building final form which is going to be like a fully on chain uh, game using this new game engine that we've built and the token is fully community owned um, but the problem too with the on-chain gaming teams is they think like they like fucking circle jerk to the shit that's the fact that they're like an on-chain game so much uh, bro we're in a fucking autonomous world bro that's the problem <laughs> hey, you gotta turn that camera on Sobe I know I can't I, bro I dead ass have my webcam what do you plugged mean, in bro? it's not turning on it's not turning on bro I want to show people I want to show the world my fit right now uh, what are you wearing? <laughs> I'm just wearing a navy shirt. <laughs> like, <laughs> I should put on my Monad shirt actually. I wear that a lot. My Monad shirt. Le hey Sobe, so when you see something like Fantasy Top in such a short time capture so much attention and money, but just focus on CT, does it sort of kill the narrative that you need to be building games for like mass market adoption outside of this space? I mean. It's just the fact that I think people are underappreciating that there is a world in which you can build games that do very well for the crypto audience. I think people just ignore that a lot of the time because for us, okay, this may sound fucked up to say, maybe not, but if I had to pick between a team that was like really good at building a game and like horrible at the crypto side of stuff versus like you're mediocre at the game, but you're like elite at the crypto side of stuff, I would pick like mediocre game with like elite community stuff over it because you can the, the reason why is because the second order effect of like if you're actually doing the crypto stuff well then at some point your community can get involved and fix the problems associated with it or you can if it's a finance it's a problem of just talent you cannot get enough money to fix the talent part but if fundamentally like you don't know how crypto works or the benefits of it you know i'll give you guys an example we talked to a like top 15 game studio globally Right, they wanted they want to do something. They're like, we're talking 
to you guys, and they were like, they're ta- they're like talking to Sui, which was hilarious because I was like, dude, do you guys have you ever even used Sui in your life? They probably haven't used Zai either, but that's the approach that some of these large like enterprises have is they've never used this shit, so they just go and like start talking to people, and they were telling me their idea. They have a really big IP. Um, most people on this call have probably played it, and they it's like a, a big a- action type game, but they want to make a card set for crypto like their crypto game was going to be this like card game that they do and their idea of like implementing crypto was basically you have you have a card and if the card is an nft it has a badge and you can like buy a tool to like imprint badges on the cards and make them nfts and i was like dude this is redacted like straight up you're gonna just alienate your web 2 audience that reads like kotaku that is like told to hate nfts without making like a meaningful revenue share and then bro this was the part that blew my mind they were like oh we want we want people to pay with bitcoin it's like dude this shit takes like an hour and a half for like a transaction to finalize like <laughs> what are you guys talking and they were like yeah if we do a to- like we, we were like okay you guys if you guys are going to do a crypto game you should do a token in your game give people ownership governance all that stuff and the dude that was their crypto guy was like we're down to do the token if we issue it as a brc20 i've been reading a lot like bitcoin's going to be around for a long time and i'm like this brother has never actually bought a BRC20 in his life or tried to sell one because that's the worst experience in crypto. And that's kind of like, that is enterprise gaming right now. Like, it's we're, it's something that we're trying to work on now of like giving these people internal ammo to make these cases for them, but they don't know how to use crypto in a meaningful way, but they all know they should be paying attention to it. So I think that's the problem is the really talented, like, there's very few teams in crypto that have a game background and have a crypto background there's just very few most of them have one or the other yeah i am um, i want to pick on something you said there which i think is like super insightful right and it, it goes back to the you can pay a wannabe thread guy tiktoker to to talk about your <laughs> project for you know 500 bucks um so this is something that i think is not very talked about on crypto twitter but it's been like deep in my mind for a very long time Um, the attention that you garner on crypto Twitter is worth like the unit cost per attention is worth a hundred X, maybe more of attention, like anywhere else in the entire world. Like, like a 10,000 views on a TikTok is not nearly as financially charged as 10,000 views on a tweet and it's because the audience is very very different right like if you see a tiktok like maybe they're talking about some conspiracy theory like all right word i like it um and then (laughs) you go on (laughs) yeah and but then you like you go on crypto twitter and people are talking about like finance like you might see a tweet that makes you change like where twenty thousand dollars is being allocated yeah and like like 20 million sometimes i don't think people make doing 20 million are based on one tweet right but like the attention that's on crypto twitter is just worth so much more than attention that i've seen in any other market which then like all right the logic follows is that growing that like growing that fan base on crypto twitter is probably the best place you can do it in the world like that was one of the early reasons we started doing a bunch of stuff at monad to like build community and grow attention is because we're like dude this is not an efficient market like followers on instagram are not the same as followers on crypto twitter um an easy example of this i don't know if you guys have followed any of these accounts but there's this group of like very smart like zk devs and like mev people who have popped up in the last like six to ten months they have like three thousand followers and only the people who are like in on it know who they are but they like they are putting out tweets that are completely moving markets. Like Sisyphus has started retweeting some of them. Like one of them is a zero X balloon lover. Um, but there's like probably 40 of them and they combine maybe have a hundred thousand followers, but it's like GCR. I'm sure Kobe, like they're all paying attention to what these guys say because they're like, all right, these are the people that actually matter. Like these are people that are creating what people should care about and alignment stuff. So I don't know. All attention is not created equal. So like I just a plus one on, on what you were saying, right? Like the original thread guy is way more valuable than the TikTok thread guy that exists in a different universe. Yo, what's Dude, the algorithm sure. with accounts? 
I'm scrolling this um, Venture Apologist OX Balloon Lover. This account is lit. Dude, it's sick. I, there's a list of them that are actually great. I don't want to dox it because I feel like I feel like they're like the gods on Mount Olympus. And it's like if you upset them, then they're like, like I don't want to do that. But I'll, I'll, shoot, it, <laughs> I'll shoot it in the chat. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I need to start following these people is basically what I've taken away from this conversation. Same. Yeah, we just did but, final alpha in the middle of the podcast, and it's actual <laughs> alpha this time. It's like literally, Dude, yeah. That, like, that, what's his name, Shokun or whatever on, on Twitter, you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy's like a fucking giga chad too, dude. He's, I don't even know who he is, like, Sir Shoku, Sir Shoku or whatever. He has, like, the trunks. PFB, yeah. I, I, I know him personally, him. dude. He's a legitimate IRL, like, Yeah, he sounds like a player, freaking dude. giga chad, and I'm like... I, I, I don't know him personally, but everyone that I know that knows him is just like, yeah, this dude's a stud. And my only interaction with him has been like, oh, your food looks really good in Japan. What should I eat? And, like, then I just read his stories about trading for, like, buying houses and shit in Japan. And we're randomly on cap tables together. But the the point is you can be interacting with someone that has, like, 20,000 followers, right? That's literally worth, like, a lot of money, IRL, very well connected. And that's the crazy part about CT is uh, the type of people you can just get connected with if you're active. Yeah. Right? It's gotten bigger, and I think it's gotten a little bit harder now, but especially the other early days. I remember just reading so many of... I would I don't really listen to podcasts, but I would read all of Kevin's notes for, like, all of the up-only stuff. Right? And think about when you were doing those notes. Guaranteed, there was, like, probably... If I had to... If I am a betting man, I'd take the over on 10 VCs with more than, like, 100 AUM on average. Like, read those things. Right, like where else are you gonna get that type of like user base? And so, I think this goes to show again, maybe looping a little bit into the gaming stuff. People don't realize like, yeah, you know, I remember the early days of like food farms and where it was just a like, couple of group chats just all fighting with each other, and so much money gets like generated out of here. I've thought about this a lot of like why did something like Board Apes like blow up? Right, I think speculation is part of it, but. Speculation drives a lot of markets. I think there's this liquidity aspect of crypto that people don't realize. You know, I do. I literally remember this vividly when Dingaling bridged over to Kanto. That was like the international, intergalactic, like generational top for Kanto NFTs, because he like bridged over and just like swept every floor. Hey, you still got and the Kantos? The, I don't. I don't know. Maybe somewhere, somewhere on a wallet, somewhere. Somewhere. Um, but being a whale in Web 2 sucks, dude. Like, that's the weird thing that I think no one, none of these gaming people talk about. You can go spend... In Monopoly Go, people spend six figures trading freaking stickers, bro. Like, actual stickers. And imagine if those things were NFTs. And so there, there's a lot of value additive stuff there. I just think that uh, people underestimate how much is really going on on CT. Because you can have... It, CT is very interesting. Like, I think I'm going to be... I'm never going to leave. Like, I'm addicted to this shit. I love this industry, but you usually, like, I feel like that's a minority opinion of, like, oh, I love this industry, I'm never going to leave. Like, a lot of people are like, this place is a fucking grift, it's a scam, and I, I think it's because it's so financial. So people, you like, they kind of, you know, you, you miss out on, on Pepe because Thread Guy didn't call you when it was at 100K when K Money shielded to him, and then you start coping, right? You just start coping, you're like, oh, there's a cabal. People would say that we're me, Farouk, Dread Guy, Diesel. Like they would say that we're a cabal. We're just a bunch of idiots, dude. Like just we're buying really the out. same There's shit. No together. That's exactly. That's exactly what a cabal member would say. We really are a bunch of idiots, though. Like the other day, like uh, D's, Ov, Sobi, and I in the chat were talking about how, like, why do we never actually sell at top? Like, why do we never like like we're talking about puppets like half a Bitcoin. We're all we're up like millions in the chat, like put together, like it's, like people don't realize, like we actually all like trade like heavy teachers in there, like we're all, we actually like take positions and it's wild. And then they're like, and I'm like, dude, every time I do the same thing, it's like that coulda woulda shoulda feeling that you have again because everybody on the time is bearish, uh, and you're like, yo, this this cycle I'm not going to make this mistake. And here you are, like, you know, you made like a million dollars in like two months on NFTs. And you're like, you don't want to sell it because, of course, it's going higher, right? Like, of course, Pups is going to keep going and Arthur and fucking Ansem are going to fucking take it to, like, $1,000 per Pups. But you, it's not enough to have already made, like, half a million dollars on that in, like, two months, right? It's, like, always the same thing. 
over. Bro, I'm just tired of getting and othered on a fucking fundraising announcement, dude. I just keep getting, <laughs> I got and othered by Monad. I got and othered by by Shogun today. That's how I know I still need to keep grinding when I'm and other and othered. You gotta start somewhere. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta <laughs> talk to whoever did Monad's raise announcement. You guys and othered Santiago, I think, which is crazy. <laughs> Bro, we, I, I can't name drop it on this. Um, we and othered maybe like the biggest, the least and othered person to have ever graced crypto. Oh, I, I think you so, told me about this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there the others is actually a pretty tight spot to be. That's the cabal. Oh, the and so. others is the real. Yeah, cabal. Yeah. The real cabal. <laughs> and others like they run shit. I agree with that one actually. As as an and othered person. Oh yeah, you, they and othered you too for real. Oh, for yeah. sure. They got Saquon Barkley in there, known cryptocurrency <laughs> enthusiast. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's you need a little bit of bait. Like the you know, two do, most, the two people that the most people commented on the raise about was Saquon and Inverse Bra. Um, so like the you, Inverse you gotta, Bra was crazy though, bro. Only yeah, yeah. I don't. I mean, I'm not sure what's like out there, what's not. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, bro. Inverse Bra is like seriously a G. His backstory is crazy, and then. Well, shout out to Saquon, I, though. You know, you got a great deal. You got a great... That's... I love it when athletes get into, like, good deals. Because I'm like, damn, they probably have some guy that's coping so hard. That's, like, near their sphere of influence. That's like, fucking Saquon gone to Monad, and I... Now I have to buy Kanto <laughs> oh, no, on the open yes. market. <laughs> <laughs> well, shout, shout out Ansem, dude. He was the the one who helped, helped set so it shout up. Shout um, But yeah, we went and got dinner with... With Saquon and, and and his manager a few times, um, Are awesome you dudes. Him in fantasy this year, bro. Kevin I think so. League? On the Eagles, Saquon and the Eagles, like that's like Super Bowl contender. We got to get him purple cleats. I think whatever the main mm. like blue chip PFP on Monad is, <laughs> like no doubt will be Saquon's PFP. I'm just waiting. We on need my, to get um, him on fantasy top. Real get him tweeting. <laughs> I'm just waiting on my replacement Kia, the Monad mobile decked out in purple. Yeah, bro. What's the what's the backstory with the the key? Actually, you you actually got like the wannabe thread guy TikToker came and took your car because he's like, bro, my audience is not with thread guys. Is like, I need the Kia. That's crazy. I gotta be thread guy. I just got off the phone with insurance. It's total, bro. It's cooked. They fucking they got me, bro. Kia boys popped the back window, started it, started the car. Joy rode it 15 miles on a flat tire. Totaled my baby. We need. Monai Mobile, I don't know what the replacement's gonna be, but we got fully cooked, man. They got me, the Kia boys. The Kia boys, bro. What a. I do have That's to run like... in like two minutes to another call. <laughs> bro, I don't know why you guys are laughing, dude. I have shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> we can't all be like Thread Guy and just get paid a fucking bajillion dollars just to yell on spaces. <laughs> dude, TG's got it going on, dude. I'm just Study Monad, bro. Study Monad. He figured it out. Dude, wait, is it Monad or Monad? No, Monad. Monad. I, I've actually never heard anyone in my entire life say Monad. Yeah, I think that that's like, that's like the, the most... Uh, Monad. That's the most entertaining Nod. way to say it, I think. I don't even Nod. know what Monad... It's the French pronunciation. It's yeah, French. The French, the French nads are deep in the it's, Monad. I mean, I'm French, so it's I don't Monad. Monad. It's Monad. What does it mean? Fast? It's a, so it's a, a functional programming term is like the, oh, the nerdy go. way and like what it, like why it was picked for the name of Monad. Um, but like in, it's like an old Greek philosophy term. It means like the fundamental unit. Like b before they knew what like atoms and stuff were, they're like, oh, the, the Monad, like that's the smallest unit that exists. Like it's the, the thing. Yeah. Paradigm saw the fucking functional programming shit and was like, fuck it, we're writing the check. Bro, that's like like 99% of people <laughs> read it and they're like, I don't know what this means at all. But like 1% of was it like George? deep was it George devs. George? Yeah, bro. He, I mean, that the name makes sense to him. <laughs> like when the deep devs who know what it means see it, they're like, that's my favorite name ever. It's like a deep inside <laughs> joke for like super like people that code in Haskell. Like. That's fucking sick, though. Like, act because it's it's like you guys do a, such a good job of like the meme culture stuff too, but you're like memeing like a real thing, 
that like the you know smartest brains in the world are like that's so cool they can like buy into it you know i think i love uh, that yeah i have to run though i like you guys bye Sobi. all right Sobi, thank Sobe. you for gracing us thank you for coming for like three minutes <laughs> i can't but yeah i feel like no Sobe just yeah so we just showed up like sprinkled some like wisdom and fairy dust on us just no camera and just <laughs> poof no camera like an overlord is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's some solid wisdom though. All right, so on fantasy top, Fred guy, what's like the the strategy here? I I'm back and forth on this a little bit. Like they just we talked about at the beginning how they nerfed the fuck out of the big accounts with dead followers. Like day one fantasy top Froak might have been the worst bar on the platform, but they they fixed it <laughs> or are in the process of fixing it. So like a lot of like Kaleo's a new account or season two hero that has like t hundreds of thousands of dead followers, but it's like going crazy. Farouk's pumping like D's, a lot of those guys. Um, so I kind of transitioned from just focusing on like the really small accounts that sling out bangers to like the large consistent guys. Um, so TBD, how it plays out, we got the commons tournament on Thursday. But honestly, I'm just like happy to be here on Fantasy Top, bro. I'm just, like, happy that there's something to talk about that's engaging, yeah. especially on the social side. So, TBD, where we go with that, maybe we're even going to get a little Thread Guy Thread action on Fantasy Top. I'm just I'm just happy to be here with Fantasy Top right now. That's cute. I, I <laughs> like experimentation. Like, in general, at the most abstract layer, like, people doing new things in crypto is good. Like, we need... People need to do new things. Have you, have you think... played the pump... Or go ahead, Danny. I was kind of kind of going to switch it up, so I want you to, nah, to finish that out. I was just going to say, like, I think the success of some of these social fi apps have, like, a whole second wave of builders thinking about what they could potentially introduce, new dynamics. Like, I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot more uh, kind of, like, nuanced social fi applications coming out over the summer and the overall user base kind of gravitating on Twitter more towards some of these. And I think that would be really exciting, right? Because, like, oftentimes it's one project or a couple projects that start off hot in a certain vertical. Like, I um, think Bored Ape's, like, pretty good example of this. And then it kind of takes a second for... Uh, some of the other builders in the space to catch on and be like, oh, well, we could do something similar, but if we packaged it this way, it would introduce like a new dynamic or something like that. So, I mean, I think more and more of these applications coming out would be really exciting on the timeline this summer. And I think it like it could actually happen. This is a uh, completely unrelated question. I would ask Sobi, but I'll, Kevin, I'll ask you because you're my infra guy. I just did a podcast with Azuki, and they announced Anime Chain pretty recently. Like, I think it's an L3 on top of Arbitrum. Obviously, ApeCoin has like their Ape Chain that's deep in progress here. I'm curious what your take is on: Are we gonna just see like more and more of these NFT ecosystems just like firing blockchains? Like, does does that like make sense for the growth of the JPEGs and the NFTs? Like, is there any upside to that play? And do you think that that's going to be like a meta that catches on? I don't know if you have any thoughts on it, but I've just been thinking about it. So I wanted to throw it out there. Yeah. Um, so my answer is probably not a satisfying one for you or for anyone who's listening to this. Um, I don't think it's set in stone what happens with that. Like, there are definitely futures where that just completely washes away and it's not a thing that people do and they don't care about um and there are legitimate futures where like l3s pop up for games and like that's just how people interact with the chain um and i think whatever happens like however that plays out um the active ingredient in figuring out which way it goes is knowing which pieces of infrastructure actually get finished first that enable the experience to work well. I'll, I'll break that down a little bit because this probably makes like no sense on its own. Um, but so like good account abstraction is something that people are really working on right now, um, but it doesn't really exist in the market that well. Uh, Monad is infrastructure that we are currently working on, but it's not live yet. It doesn't exist. 
um, there are like various versions of these, right? Like social fi taking off is a, is something that now is popping up in the market, but like, you know, if Travis never went and made fantasy top, like it, it wouldn't be. So you can't know for sure which way it's going to go, but like depending on what order those things roll out in, it probably changes what the winning thing is like five years from now. So like, like if Monad just became live today and account abstraction was not and social five was not, and there were all these other things that just weren't live yet, uh, the way that people would build would be completely different. So like, I guess the, my answer would be it's, there are a bunch of things that are trying to be built right now. And depending on which, which one of them are successful and are built first, that is going to change, uh, the end state of crypto for like five years from now which is kind of like crazy to think about because people are like oh i have 100 percent conviction that this is gonna be everything in crypto moving forward it's like i you definitely do not because like the guy who invents the thing that's going to change everything like might not even have that idea yet like you have you have no idea it's actually a base take that was actually bars and i think um i've got to experience this a little bit more like with this this being like my second cycle like being here in 2020 2021 and then like coming back you realize that um there is like absolutely nothing that guarantees the previous narrative or the current leading narrative is going to follow through like six months from now a year from now like it's crazy how fast i was talking to tunes about this like it's crazy how fast like one app can change sentiment across the entire ecosystem. Like Blast is like whatever. And then all of a sudden fantasy top drops, everyone's on Blast. It feels like yeah. Blast is the most like vibrant popping ecosystem and like stole a lot of the base thunder, right? Like a lot of the base energy and narrative just like um, immediately transitioned over to Blast. And it's just like crazy how fast in crypto, like the ne one new app or new infrastructure rolling out getting adoption just completely 180 flips the narrative like, that was actually a base take i like that a lot hey clip that definitely clip that one i'll put shout the interns on it yeah, yeah shout, shout out, out savant. savant and the, the pipeline interns they'll be all over this starting probably five minutes after we hang up this call but no <laughs> i think that i think that was a fantastic take as well um and like from my kind of high level non-technical impression as well there's a lot of like almost guessing about what infrastructure can like handle the next wave of adoption if you will and then like these new applications these new use cases come along and they're stress tested right and like a lot of times things don't perform infrastructure doesn't necessarily perform up to like expectations that have been set on the marketing side of things and like when you get to that point it's like okay well now we need to pivot because you know we're just like we've totally filled up the chain and we haven't even gotten to where we wanted to on the product side of things so i think that's like where i think to a degree that's where l2s came from in the first place and that's like why we're talking about l3s now because like those have been maxed out in in many cases to a degree so it's almost like this iterating in real time uh, i don't know if that actually makes sense from a technical perspective but that's kind of my perception of it oh for sure i mean yeah one thing that's like definitely worth but like just to make sh just to point out that like no one can be super confident in their predictions right now like the vast majority of people's take on what is up next is like based on how good their marketing team is which is not connected or it's like loosely connected to the product which is like loosely connected to how far along their engineers are in cracking this like there is there are very real futures where like monad is like a year and a half ago like ah you know we'll just build the product we'll like handle marketing community later and like no one knows what this thing is it doesn't exist like it's just not a thing that people care about and then when they're making their predictions about like, oh, what's the market look like? Like, Mana's just not part of it. Like, there's no limit order book that changes DeFi forever in anyone's mind because they just like don't know. So there's like, there's like seven uh, areas of randomness that come into this, which just makes it like, like anyone who says with absolute certainty what's going to happen with like new tech rolling out is, you know, they're certainly selling you something, but they, you know, they 
should probably be less confident in their own takes. For like, how you doing over there? I'm good. Um, <laughs> this is not really my thing. Talking. I was about gonna say. I feel like I feel like you've been <laughs> not, like, talking really, way too much, dude. I'm not really building blockchains, so it's not really my game. When what when about we're on the? Using? I don't think we're looking into infrastructure play for now. First, you build a narrative, then you build a product, and then we'll talk infrastructure in a few years. But uh, we're definitely not on that 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 front. We're still about to crack the social fi. Uh, aspect of things and then we'll talk in for down the line but i don't think it's needed just yet you know what i mean like if i can like i think like the social fi is like the social media l2 at the moment it's like a bunch of them so we'll see if there's going to be a narrative spun out for one of them but i don't think so i don't i don't think there's going to be a need for it just yet we need a thread guy l4 whenever your rug radio l3 comes through <laughs> like guy l2 on top of monad yes we need to make that happen I feel like the vast majority of people would just switch over to the thread guy L2 simply for the memes, just because it was there. And like, like even if it was ultimately slower, like I feel like everyone would just be like, all right, I'm, I'm going to go settle on the thread guy L2. Dude, this is, yeah, this is thread guy working uh, on the NFT front here is literally just like an eight step 40 chess move to take all social fi <laughs> apps that exist in crypto two years from now and run them on his personal L2. I will say this though on the NFT side, like we've been talking about social fi a lot, but it, it is interesting, like fantasy top cards are NFTs. And I think there's a lot of conversation right now where it's like, all right, what, like what is NFTs on, on Monad or fuck Monad, NFTs anywhere look like right now, even ordinals price goes down and it's like all right well is this was this any different at all i think it's definitely like exciting times ahead though for like the jpeg crew when you start this because like also with fantasy top there was this idea pre of like nfts with utility right and it's like gaming nfts like board ape sort of started like the roadmap thesis and projects promising things most of them not delivering but i felt like we got to this this nihilistic side of utility isn't real and doesn't exist but you could like technically classify what's happening with fantasy top cards as like utility right like something to do with with the actual assets so i i'm optimistic that that was a little bit of a, a breakthrough on the social side of nfts and it's like man as we get closer to to monad and obviously like testnet then mainnet i think you can start to fantasize a little bit about like what's possible as far as resparking that sector and maybe of course we're going to be at the forefront of it i've definitely yeah. seen like a degree i mean at least within like monad circles i've seen like some of our kind of core community members thinking that like oh this could be from like a culture and memes perspective like an actual resurgence of nfts that goes well beyond monad itself and i for one would be super pumped to see that happen like the days in the trenches of 2021 when you know you and all your friends in the group chat are just absolutely spamming a mint button and you're like literally on the edge of your seat like wondering if you're gonna pull any mint at all like i don't know if i've ever had more fun on the internet than i did during that phase and i think to to like bring that back full force would just be so so exciting and also if there's deeper social dynamics under that just given the maturation of the space over time that would just be like my personal heaven so you know i i certainly hope we get there and um i fundamentally think it's a a cultural thing up front um and that honestly could lead the the wave for sure all right so we do we we have been on for uh, a little while here um, can look to wrap it up. There is one final question that we look to ask uh, every guest who comes on. It has shamelessly been ripped from the up only days. Um, it's the final alpha, right? And I will ramble on a little bit to give you, you guys some time to think through what you might say. But the final alpha is essentially, you know, it, it could be a tweet that you saw. You know, it's it's one nugget that you would like to leave the listeners with. Maybe you know, a quote from a book you read. It could be literally anything, an observation that you've made on the state of social fi over the last 18 hours. Um, just one thing that you guys think, like, it might be important 
Um, it might not be important. It could be a joke. Like you guys could quite literally leave with anything, but we do like to open the floor for, for one kind of final statement or, or thought that you guys have, um, to designate as your final alpha final Bro, alpha no. like a quote could be anything it could alpha, be like. it could be a, yeah it could be a piece of health information that you think is important that no one's paying attention to uh Fuck. Wh- whichever direction you would like to take it i think maybe red guy can go first for yeah, if you right. want to uh let's yeah. do it yeah my first is please for the sake of my fantasy top lineup go <laughs> write some bangers for kev here but on a serious note, I think I said something similar in the last pod that we did. Shout out Danny Pipelines. Um, but I, honestly, mine is just like stay curious. Because I think um, as, we, as we ramp up here, shit, it, it's, it gets crazy. It gets hard to like filter through the noise. But everyone's talking about social fire right now. But three, four weeks ago, especially like a week pre friend tech airdrop, like it was not in the discussion at all. Something like Fantasy Top comes out. It's in Testnet. There's some rumblings of it. It's, it's on my timeline, like, boom, all of a sudden, socialify everything. Or in the same, uh, pump.fun, which we spent some time talking about as well. It's like, pump.fun comes out. It's like the new thing. It's kind of cringe. The UI looks, looks kind of whatever. The people that were early that hopped on it that were curious and, and tr- tried that shit out sort of got the early taste. It then pops off. Then it's like, yeah, obviously, pump.fun is, is like, of course, that's the narrative. Or even in the sense of the pre-sales. Like, I remember, honestly, our group chat, we cooked on this when Boehm and Dark Farm did yeah. the pre-sale. Like, I, we were, Dee's was just, I remember Dee's said in the chat, he's like, oh, this looks like something we should probably, like, send some money to. But pre-sales were, like, not the hot thing. Nobody was posting pre-sales. No one was making money from them. It was not in the discussion at all whatsoever. So I think, like, as, I don't know, this cycle goes forward, I feel like I see more and more, like, people that have already made it graduate and leave the trenches and then you watch the t- i've been calling it beanie maxing on the timeline like you watch the t- <laughs> it's like slowly and slowly and slowly just like disassociate you watch like people are quicker and quicker and quicker to fud the new thing fud fantasy fud pump dot fun whatever it is before it takes over and, and wins over the narrative so uh, I don't know. I've just am been in the, like I'm right now. I'm trading tokenized countries on world PVP right now. Like I'm trying to just <laughs> fucking be an ancient Roman gladiator, like in the Colosseum and just like stay curious with what's happening. So I think that's 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 my nugget for 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 how to play this year. And of course, shout out Danny Pipeline. Shout out Kev Intern. Shout out fucking Monad. We're over here cooking. Let's go. Hell yeah. I love that. Staying curious Anger. is the most important thing in crypto. If you're not curious, you're done. Like it's you either like stay curious and like like or else you're gonna end up in the mid curve for life. I think that's what most people make the biggest mistake. Like they don't they think they're so much better than everybody else or so much smarter, but it doesn't matter because you get out traded by some idiot that's never used crypto before, even if you're class of two thousand these nuts. Like it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like like the whole class of like the whole like oh I was there, like we got laughed at all through twenty twenty one, but like we nft still cook the hardest and like now you have a lot of people like hard like mid curving like meme coins and like social fi because it's maybe too time consuming and they've all made their gazillions of dollars and they're too cool for the current timeline but like remember like where like and started like when they got into the crypto journey right so that's why like i never like the whole like oh your last cycle like i'm from 2021 but like we've built faster than a lot of people that have been there since like 2013 for say right because we care so like the other thing would be like my that's a piece of advice I always give everyone, like that when they're building something, it's like be the person everybody wants to work with. And so that's why I think like, for example, you guys, like what you guys are doing in Monad, it's cool. Cause like people want to be are attracted to what you're building because you guys are cool. And, like you're inviting a bunch of people to be a part of it. And so are we, right? Like on the rugby or the crypt side, Dustin and like everything we're building is like, like we're trying to be that place where like everybody wants to cook. Like whether Dragon wants to create his content, like on our platform and work with like Monad or like, uh, when you have like a bunch of creators that work with other brands and whatnot, but as like they still like bring value to the rugby network, like that's what it's all about. Like I don't care, like per se about like what the semantics of like the old guard, and like we just care about being like this brand that everybody wants to be like part of this movement. And that's what crypto is, right? It's like a uh, abundance mindset, and like scarcity mindset is like the worst enemy of anybody into this industry so that's what i would say banger alpha beautiful alpha all around 
Shout out for Roke. Shout out Thread Guy. Shout out Rug Radio. Shout out Sobi briefly. And shout out D's at the dentist. Dees. Hopefully we'll get him next time. But D's absolute teeth. <laughs> D's teeth. Absolute banger. I know the community is going to love listening into this one. You guys are all welcome anytime. Would love to, to have you back on the pipeline to banter about all the hot topics in crypto. Truly, truly a pleasure. And thanks, of course, to Intern as well for hopping on and, and co-hosting. Great time today, guys. Hell yeah. Thank you for having us. I appreciate, appreciate y'all, it, man. Danny.